Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of No Such Thing as a Fish, which is the first in our run of live summer shows at the Soho Theatre in London. We have all sorts of amazing guests lined up for you for the rest of the summer. I won't go into that now because I really don't want to spoiler it, especially for the people who have tickets. But what I can tell you is that in this week's show, we were joined by Jamie Morton. Now you will know Jamie if you listen to No Such Thing as a Fish before because he has been on quite a few shows. This is his third episode appearance but of course he is most well known for being one third of let's be honest the greatest british podcast of all time my dad wrote a porno now one important thing to say about that is that the my dad wrote a porno team have chosen some of their funniest moments from across their six season run including some unheard gems and they'll be releasing best of episodes once a month starting on monday the 31st of july i absolutely can't wait for those best of shows i'm sure you can't either but in the meantime please do enjoy this week's episode of no such thing as a fish with jamie martin okay on with the podcast Hello and welcome to another episode of No Such Thing as a Fish, a weekly podcast this week coming to you live from the Soho Theatre in London! My name is Dan Schreiber. I am sitting here with Andrew Hunter-Murray, James Harkin, and Jamie Morton. And once again, we have gathered around the microphones with our four favorite facts from the last seven days. And in no particular order, here we go. Starting with fact number one, and that is Jamie. My fact this week, boys, is in 1782, a woman found a drag performance so hilarious that she literally died of laughter. Wow. Probably not going to happen tonight. But, um, <laughs> not with me here, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, isn't that mad? Yeah, it's insane. So this was a uh, this was an act that was a it was a play called Beggar's Opera, and yes. it was someone called Charles Bannister who was playing a character called <laughs> Polly Peachum. And yeah, to, to give us a story. Yeah. So Mrs. Fitzherbert. Okay. Suspiciously, there's no first name. Mm. Uh, but she was a widow of a Northamptonshire clergyman. So she was quite, it was quite salacious that she was even at this kind of submersive show. Okay. Uh, and she found it so funny that this man came out uh, and he, he was described as lantern jawed with five o'clock shadow and a double chin mm. in a lovely pretty dress. Mm. And she just found it so funny. She just <laughs> didn't stop laughing yeah. for three days. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's the yeah. amazing thing. Like, she had yeah. to leave the theatre, didn't she? Because yes. she was laughing so much. <laughs> but that's not when she died. No. The newspaper report said she couldn't get the uh, figure from her memory. Wow. So it's just every morning she'd just wake up and go, ah! <laughs> I mean, what a sheltered fucking life. I'm sorry. Uh, like, if that makes you laugh that much to kill you. Maybe yeah. it was a really good show. Yeah. Maybe it was, you know. Well, The Beggar's Opera. It's, it's a classic. A, yeah. And the yeah. actor, yeah. Bannister, he was one of the great actors of the day. He was very yeah, funny. Yeah, he was. He was yeah. famous. A yeah. good name, too. Charles Bannister. Charles Bannister. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so John Gay, The Beggar's Opera, actually, that was the first play which had songs in it that were part of the narrative, ah. The Beggar's oh. Opera. So it's pretty much the first musical, I would say. Yeah. And it was so popular, there was a thing called Beggar Mania. And so you could go around, you could buy matchboxes, fans, fire guards, everything with this, um, with this show on. Oh, oh uh, it's like no such thing as a fish. <laughs> on your uh, tables there is a merchandise uh, oh leaflet. I think it's got a QR code. Uh, <laughs> it genuinely is, I can see it right go there. Go nuts. Yeah, uh, <laughs> get some of that merch. Jamie, please, we Treat rely yourself. on this. We rely on the merch. It's, a, <laughs> it's all that's keeping us going. Um, I was looking at people who had died on stage. Okay. And, I, and, yeah, yeah. I, and I have like a weird connection connection to one of these so Moliere oh yeah oh yeah yeah very famous French yeah. playwright actor he uh, collapsed on stage ironically playing the lead in his final play called the imaginary invalid so he was he literally died playing a hypochondriac right <laughs> and I have also That's method played the lead in the imaginary invalid. really yes yes wow. I know that's yes. cool in my youth, it's not that cool. I mean, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, I sort of said that on autopilot, Jamie. I wasn't actually <laughs> thinking that is really you cool. You don't care at all. Um, but no, yeah, um, but back in my youth when I used to, you know, 
tread the boards. I didn't die, obviously, <laughs> but, uh, you know. The thing about yeah. him, actually, is because he was an actor, in those days, actors couldn't go to heaven. So... <laughs> wow. <laughs> if you... I'm not sure anyone could go... Well, now let's not get into that. That's an ecumenical matter, but, like... So, um... <laughs> The thing was, if you're an actor, it was like, yeah, you had to renounce your acting job before you died. So oh, on, on, your, your, on your deathbed, deathbed you might wow. say, oh, I was never really an actor, or I wasn't a very good one, or whatever, and oh, then right. you would be allowed right. to go to if heaven. Play, if you said, oh, I'm really more of a playwright. Um, <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm more of a sort of immersive media creator, really. <laughs> I facilitated Help. the heathens. I yeah, wasn't yeah, one yeah. of them myself. Um, but yeah, no. and, and the thing was, is that that meant that he was buried without, he wasn't allowed to be buried in a churchyard or anything God. like that, because he died so quickly after this event. Oh, yeah. wow, okay. I, I, I went to see a Molière play a few years ago. Oh, yeah. and I, um, Starring Jamie Morton? Yes. No, it wasn't. How, no, how, 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 how was I? Well, <laughs> it, be wasn't, kind. it wasn't one with you in, but I did, I did leave it halfway through. Did oh, you? really? Yeah. Wow. So in a sense, Molière died a second time that night. <laughs> Wow. I'd say it's in the translation. <laughs> I think he's a fantastic playwright. Oh, I'm sure he is. There was a school party all around us. And it, it, was, is, it was yeah. tricky. Uh, they were not having a yeah. good time. Yeah. And neither were we. Um, <laughs> um, I've got a little quiz for you guys. Oh, oh great. Cool, great. All right, so this is... Th I get, I'm going to say a thing, right, an, an object, and you have to say what it's, what it's used for by the Royal Shakespeare Company <laughs> as, like, stage... Gore. Okay. okay. Oh, oh, great. Right. Okay. So, okay. in 2010, for example... Oh, but Shakespeare specifically? Sha yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. right. Th this is, these are all used by the RSC, right? So, in right. 2010, uh, the Royal Shakespeare Company, they used three tins of lychees during their summer season. Uh, bubos. Like... Not bubos. I was. I was. Well, it wasn't actually an everyone play game. <laughs> <but it> was... <laughs> that no. school party's in again. Please yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> no, just... Uh, Wait for a second, just let it... Eyeballs. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. They can edit that. We can edit yeah, that. Yeah, no, yeah. well, yeah. well done, well done to the people who knew it, and thank you. And yeah, oh, eyeballs. eyeballs. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> that's the because um, what scene? Yeah, uh, where oh. they blind uh, the Duke of Gloucester. <laughs> okay. Cool. Oh, yeah. He actually knew. That's very that. impressive. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, here's okay. another one. Yeah. Uh, chicken fillets. Chicken fillets. Boobs for <laughs> bras. <laughs> To pump up the bras. Actual. Mm. Well, that's chicken a real thing. <laughs> no, it's not. No, that they're, cool. they're, they're colloquially called chicken, but they're not actual chicken fillets. Well, I've got an Amazon delivery from my wife that she's going to be very confused about. <laughs> uh, um, flapping skin and muscles. Oh, nice. Like. Yeah, no, it's. Uh, it, it's anyone, uh, anyone in the audience? Yes. It's yes. tongues. Tongues. Oh. Oh. Uh, and finally, tinned pears. Tin tinned pears. pears. Um, tennis tinned ball. No, um, nothing. Tennis ball. <laughs> I didn't said, even say that. Did you I, say, I say testicles? I said half of it and then I pulled back. Yeah. Okay. I, well, I think uh, testicles is a good call. Yeah. Okay, what? testicles. All right. No. Idiot. No. <laughs> <laughs> you complete fool deck. No, it's <laughs> penises. It's tin penises. Tin pairs for penises. Sorry? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you penises? serious? Yeah. Don't. Andy. What? What? Sorry, what's the question? I've either been buying some really odd pears <laughs> yeah. or I need to see a doctor. I think, I think they're shaped a little bit, but I think it's the consistency and... The, I mean, they're the not... The consistency <laughs> of a tin pear. Also, <laughs> what are they doing with these fake penises that they need a good consistency? Yeah. I'm not sure I've seen that Shakespeare play where they all get their cocks out. <laughs> what? Which one is that? Oh, yeah. Is it's... it measure for measure? That's right. <laughs> I don't actually, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. There we go. And they have, a, they have real, like, they have an amazing department. And they have their, their fake blood is a... <laughs> <laughs> could, it be, <laughs> could it be that you put it in your stockings and it gives you a shape, maybe? I don't think, I think no. it was for some, there's some horrible, like, Titus Andronicus has lots of terrible oh. torture and gore and all this stuff. So they, they right. like, it's rare. Oh, it's not, okay. it's not compl across the canon that you need a tin pair. <laughs> In the department, but they've got these. Um, a tin pan. <laughs> their, their fake blood recipe is secret, and they've got three different consistencies. And okay. there was an interview with uh, Helen Hughes, who's one of their a very senior prop and design people, and she was being interviewed about fake blood. And they, they, the interviewer asked her, like, "What kind of? What do you use for your fake blood?" And she said, "What kind of blood? There's venal blood, arterial blood, newly dry blood, crusty old blood. Mm. They've got. They can do oh. all of it. All oh, the blood. She's an artist. She's an artist. She, she yeah. knows her craft. I know." Yeah, Helen. Yeah. There yeah. was a, there was a story which is because um, you got this story from a Giles Brandreth 
um, anecdote book, didn't mm. you? Yeah, theater anecdote yeah. book. The word fact would be questionable, <laughs> but uh, yes, I did. Um, but there was so there was a guy who was called William McReady, and um, it was early 19th century Shakespearean plays that he was in. And he forgot basically to put blood on his hand because he was in Macbeth and he needed blood on his hand. Oh, yeah. And he went to the side of the stage and it wasn't there. It wasn't on the side and he desperately needed it. But there happened to be a bystander there. So oh. he punched him in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and no swiped the blood off his nose oh, and ran God. back on. Yeah. That's According amazing. to Giles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And that's where it falls down. That's, amazing. Uh, that's incredible. But what happens when you die? What do you mean? What would happen to you as a person if you died? What would you... What, I think what would you become? A oh, ghost? A ghost. a ghost! I got so into theatre ghosts. <laughs> okay. Oh, right. Researching this. There are so many. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are really tragic. So actually, where um, this woman died of laughter at the Theatre Royal Jury Lane... Yes. Uh, they're kind of... They're bit, they've got, it's, I think it's the most haunted theatre in the world. Or they claim that, you know. Mm -hmm. And their kind of main event, their big star is... The, is What's his name? The Man in Grey. Okay. Um, who can be seen on like the upper circle, I think, and, she, and he just like has a big cloak and is very menacing. <laughs> and it's actually founded in truth, because when it was being renovated in the 1800s, they, they kind of found a bit of a fake bit of the wall, and they, and they looked into it, and it was a little cubby hole, and inside that cubby hole uh, was a skeleton of a man with a dagger through his chest. Wow. Mm. And that's the exact place where this this ghost has been spotted for, for centuries. Very cool. Dan believes it. <laughs> Dan believes it. I the don't. theory of everything else. <laughs> I think, I, think um, I, I, I feel like that would be retroactively have been inserted into a wall in order to... Really? Yeah, I've got very yeah. sceptical recently. Why? Yeah. Um, we need to move on, guys, to our next Do we? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, laughter can be very dangerous, yeah. right? So there was a study from the University of Birmingham. It was a meta-analysis, so they looked at loads of papers. Uh, and they found that laughter can cause abdominal hernia, dislocated jaw, incontinence, fainting, uh, infectious diseases, because when you laugh, you breathe in a lot and you get lots of germs <laughs> so, in your mouth. Yeah. Thanks for coming, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> There's a thing called uh, Boerhaave's syndrome, which is you laugh so much that you rupture your esophagus. That can happen. But despite this, they have laughing contests, and this is becoming quite common in America now. Um, basically, you go in and you just try and make each other laugh. And there's loads of different types of laugh. It's like best giggle and best knee slapping laugh and best belly laugh and stuff like that. Uh, and apparently, the woman who won the American Championship last year, uh, she didn't tell anyone until afterwards, but she pissed her pants in the first round. Oh, oh wow. wow. Is that an illegal move? I. <laughs> <laughs> feels like it must be, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, uh, it was only like a couple of years ago I pissed myself while laughing. And it's honestly, it's one of those moments where it's not embarrassing. It's great. It's Is a it? really wonderful feeling. You feel like you've done <laughs> laughter next level. You feel yeah. like you've... What, what, what was, was it? it? What no, we, no, it was a late night. I was, I was quite drunk. Someone said a joke. And I just laughed so hard that I just... And it wasn't even like, like a little bit of wee. It was like, pfft, like total <laughs> flood. And I honestly, I did not apologize. I was like, guys, you all need to try this. I think we've forgotten how great this feels. <laughs> okay, well, we've got three more facts. <laughs> Stop the podcast. Stop the podcast. Hey, everyone, this week's episode of Fish is sponsored by Canva. Yes, Canva is a design platform. It allows you to create beautiful content in any format whatsoever. Specifically, they have a thing called Canva for Teams. So you and your team can design gorgeous things. It might be social media posts, it might be videos or presentations. It makes it very easy to design digital content which is lovely it is lovely and it has everything from premium fonts to photos that you can use there's graphics there's videos uh you could have your documents that you're sending out to business partners all done up nicely you can have your presentations where you're showcasing the latest business numbers or whatever it is you're showing out on the most stunning looking possible thing and then you can even print them through canva onto mugs posters you know whatever you like I actually used Canva recently, and I used it to design uh, a little invitation. And it was very easy and nice. Mm. Yeah, and mm. did you then print it onto a mug? 
Yeah, and the, it was RSVT instead of RSVP. See, it's a little joke about about mugs having tea in them there. So th- I guess the point that we're trying to make here is that mm. if you want to design and collaborate with Canva for Teams, you can right now get a free 45 day extended trial. All you need to do is go to canva.me slash fish. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash fish. That's right. So head to canva.me slash fish. Get that free 45 day extended trial and get designing. Okay, on with the show. On with the podcast. (laughs) Okay, it is time for fact number two, and that is James. Uh, My fact this week is that the first modern waterbed was filled with jelly rather than water. The problem was that it was too heavy to move and started to go rancid after a few weeks. Isn't that incredible that it was jelly? I, yeah. I find that one of the most astonishing facts we yeah. have on this show. Yeah, it makes sense, really, doesn't it? If you want something, you know, nice and soft to lie on. So was it like, was it was the bed um, like kind of the mold, the jelly mold, if you like, and you pour it in and then it sets? <laughs> oh, it... I see what you're saying. Oh. Um, yeah, I guess it must have been really because you'd be weird to just shove in solid jelly yeah, into yeah. it, wouldn't it? <laughs> Um, I'm not quite sure. He also used cornstarch as well. So cornstarch would be soft, but then it's non-Newtonian. So as you sort of push on it, it would get more solid. Yeah. Um, But again, that went rancid as well. (laughs) <laughs> this is a, what's a liquid that doesn't go rancid? <laughs> <laughs> but he, so sta- cool. he started it not as a bed. It started as a chair. Yeah, so Charles Hall this yeah. is, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, Charles Hall. So it was called, uh, the very first thing he invented, uh, it was called the incredibly horrible thing. And it was, a, <laughs> it, was a, it was a chair. It weighed 300 pounds. It had liquid starch inside it and had a vinyl skin. And the point was is that when you sat into it, the chair would creep up around you oh, because you were oh, molding oh. into it. It like sits a, on you. Uh, <laughs> kind of. Eventually, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Okay, so he made that. Yeah. But what he really, really wanted to do was make an entire room that was a waterbed slash chair. Oh, wow. So it was almost like a bit like a padded cell, I suppose. Mm. But you would walk in, close the door, and wherever you were, you would just sort of sink into the wall or sink into the floor. Oh, my God. Uh, But it was only because it was so expensive to make that he decided to go for the waterbed instead. Gosh. And what was could, expensive, yeah. manufacturing the jelly or the materials? Well, the thing is, if you want to buy a room, you kind of need to have buy a house as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you need point. to like renovate your whole house to do that. Whereas yeah, if you yeah. just want to buy a bed or a chair, you could rent. Yes, yeah. you could. <laughs> oh, but I, I don't think I want to rent a waterbed. No? Is it, no, no I mean, you could it... rent a flat and put your waterbed <laughs> in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, you could do that as well. Have yeah. any of you, <laughs> yeah. have any no, of you ever slept on a waterbed? Yeah, my parents used to have one. I what? don't think I have. When I was no. a kid. Are they yeah. really? Yeah, 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 really. They're so uncomfortable. Yeah. Oh, are they? They're horrible. I thought they, they were... I, think I, I read about them said they're amazing. Like, they're the, they're the equivalent of pissing yourself while laughing. You know? <laughs> that, <laughs> But it, it, maybe mine was like, an, like it was a friend's parents' bed. Yeah. Um, when I was a kid, and it was it was like being seasick. It would right. like move. Oh. It was honestly vile. Huh. <laughs> and it was really cold. Like they hadn't heated the water. Oh, but you can't you can't get those now. You can't, oh, can't, oh, oh, thank so God. Okay. Well, it's all changed. <laughs> <laughs> no, Charles, Charles Hall these days who invented this thing what fifty years ago. Yeah. He now he has two water beds. <laughs> no, that doesn't, no, that doesn't sound very impressive. But he's got because they they come in different. Uh, it's different bladders. So you can say how many bladders are there in your water bed. So he's got uh, he's got one king size single bladder. Oh wow. But he's also <laughs> if only you had a king size bladder that <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> he's also got a, in his, his guest room he's got a double mattress which has adjacent double bladders which so you can heat one if you want your bed a bit warmer that than whoever you're sleeping cool. next to oh you really can, oh that's excellent you can yeah. hot water bottle your your yeah. own your whole bed. your bed is the hot water bottle wow yeah. oh you're actually selling it maybe we should yeah. look at one guys well, that's incredible this first one was the one that Hall invented it I think it was 1968 he invented it he called it the pleasure pit mm. um, and we should probably talk about the slightly there was a slightly sexy reputation they had. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One of the manufacturers in the early days was called Wet Dream. <laughs> um, there was an advert. I don't know. It's not a great advert. Um, but it said, she'll admire you for your car. Mm. She'll respect you for your position. And she'll love you for your waterbed. No. So yeah, it was yeah, a kind yeah. of um, well, there was lots because he had creepy, that to yeah. begin with. So he had, he had invented it. He had patented it. But everyone just did sort of spin off 
water beds and he said that there was one company he noticed that it was uh, it was sort of sexy because like their other products were orgy butter and things like that <laughs> right um and then when you read into orgy it butter. orgy butter and I, I did i did a lot of googling I'm so sorry. Today on we, orgy we've butter. had to switch to orgy marge because of the cost of living <laughs> sorry uh, so orgy butter was a thing yeah, and then when you look into as you say the sexual connotations about the yeah. early sales of the water bed so a lot of it was that it was basically like having a threesome because the bed acted as the third person because it molded around oh you as you it feels like a third God. person is as part of the but hang on Bloody hell. i'm sorry <laughs> just like let's just like I feel zoom like out on this taking this like i'm just telling you about my experiences well these are the facts well you're telling us your parents did it. have one so yeah. you probably do you probably conceived in it were you probably. are you from a water bed probably. oh God. Wow. You're a water baby. <laughs> yes. Because, <Nice. laughs> like, I don't want to be, like, let's not get too graphic, but, like, there's got to be a purchase problem. Supposedly like, not. Supposedly not. It's Apparently a water baby. Like, you're, like, sloshing around. It's, this is apparently, not apparently, conducive to I mean, they a were good very time. popular. A bit I know they were popular. At one, at one point, I think a fifth of mattresses being sold were waterbed yeah. mattresses. Yeah, I, I read 80s. that. I, I thought that Actually, was... Actually, 1987, which is the year I was insane. born. <laughs> 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 And Hugh Hefner famously bought one for the Playboy Mansion that was um, upholstered in Tasmanian possum hair. <laughs> Isn't that the most disgusting thing also, you've ever, not, ever heard? They're not very big. A po possums, so many Tasmanian possums hairs. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it had this reputation for being very kind of a, like a, a, a sexual aid. Because yeah. Yeah, another tagline for it was, two things are better on a waterbed and one of them sleep. Mm. I know. Like, one in five kinky people are just, like, getting <laughs> off. Well, your parents, one of them. Yep. Two of them. Yeah. Two of them, yeah. Getting off on waterbeds. <laughs> and honestly, must have felt so sick, because yeah. it's the worst thing to sleep isn't, on. Isn't there a point where you stop, if you stop moving, the bed will eventually no, stop moving? No, it keeps moving. Oh, OK. You're no, kind really. of, like... You're, you're lost at sea. It's an <laughs> extraordinary experience. But I can't... But God, that, that's an, another I can imagine you ringing up the Coast Guard. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Away from the sexual side, it was also seen as quite therapeutic. So, for example, the friends of uh, Charles Hall, when he first invented it, said, well, you should name it the Bed Womb. Because oh, it's, it feels womb like. It feels very. Right. It's, quite, it's, it's good, good line. Good yeah, it's a good line. Get a bedroom for your bedroom. <laughs> I'll it's call a good you line. A therapist. That's. But and so and then there was a, in 1988, uh, the American Journal of Disease of Children published an article in which they said that um, for infants that were born to drug addicted mothers, if you kept them on water beds rather than bassinets, that would be better for them. This sort of constant right. womb like movement oh, right. uh, going okay. on as they sleep. Yeah. Huh. So yeah. it was seen as therapeutic as well. Well, the thing is that he did invent the modern waterbed, but actually there were earlier ones, and they were used therapeutically. So they were used um, during the war to prevent bed sores. And these yeah. weren't like the ones that we had in the 80s, but they were just kind of like, I don't know, like, you know, one of those blow-up mattresses, but with yeah. water inside of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark Twain wrote about them. Elizabeth Gaskell wrote about really? them. Uh, Charles Hall couldn't get a patent originally because they'd been described by Robert A. Heinlein. Quite a few of his books mentioned them. And when he tried to get a patent, they went, well, it's in all these science fiction books, so you can't have invented it. So he had to change a few oh, things right. to get that. Huh. Um, but when they became quite lame, which was quite quickly, so they were, like, massive in the early 80s, right? And then by the late 80s, they were really passe. Like, no mm. one really wanted them anymore. And they had all these waterbeds. They didn't know what to do with them. And they gave them to dairy farmers, and the cows would sit on them. So, oh, and that's oh, still they still, they still that's do. Still the Queen's yeah. cows, um, they famously slip, uh, sleep on waterbeds. The King's cows. Well, now the King's yeah. cows, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't yeah. know if he's changed it, though, but the, the you know. <laughs> sure, okay. All right. I've been waiting 70 years to kick those cows <laughs> off that bed. <laughs> They're my cows now. <laughs> That's what he was wow. waiting for. So most, if you're, they're so heavy, as you say, they're so heavy. Yeah. Like a normal, most impractical thing I ever know, Like a normal mattress is quite heavy, you yeah, know? Yeah. But if you fill it with water, you're joking, you know? It's like, <laughs> so some of them can weigh 900 kilos if you've got a, a big double or a king. Oh, that's, that's a lot. Hell. And there's a concern in some buildings, if you're in a flat or you're on an upper floor, obviously, and it, you know, that it'll go through the floor. Yeah. And most New York leases contain a standard clause which says no waterbeds. Right. Oh, met, probably because of like, it's a bit, you know, maybe it's just bureaucracy. But, hmm. but in California, on the other coast, 
The civil code says landlords cannot discriminate against people who own waterbeds. No. As Damn long, right. As long as they have taken out waterbed insurance. Right. Yeah. The responsible yeah. thing to do. You've it got is. To do that. It is. Well, That's I quite like incredible. as well in 1990, speaking of California, the Compton Fire Department within their fire uh, station changed all of the mattresses to water mattresses. Not so that, like, if there was an emergency... Just if they needed more no. water. No, no. <laughs> uh, it was the effect on their back, apparently. they Someone had said, I sleep better on a waterbed, and so they all... Mm. But that's that. all been disproven, that it, it doesn't actually help, because there's a lot of things that it helps, like your posture, like your joints. That isn't true. Really? Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Apparently it's not true. Right. Um, yeah. I'm just obsessed that there was a waterbed magazine. Oh, yeah, I know. I <laughs> in the 80s. I tried finding it. Yeah, so did I. Oh did my you God. get any no, luck? No, 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 me nothing, neither. So, nothing. cool. Uh, great. Okay. Um, <laughs> but Brilliant. I've bought us a lot of orgy butter. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, yeah. good, good. <laughs> um, can I ask you guys one last thing? How, yeah. often, how often do you flip your mattress? <laughs> ah, do you mean flip it over? What? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> What other interpretation <laughs> I, are you? I was double checking because I thought I might have heard you say flick your mattress and I wasn't sure. How often do you flick your mattress? <laughs> Twice a night. <laughs> no, how often do you flip it? Well, uh, this is what's amazing. Not as often as I should, I'm sure. Right. And I was planning tomorrow to flip my mattress. <laughs> get out of yeah. here. No, yeah, get yeah, absolutely, lost. because both Fenella and I are falling off the edges on both sides <laughs> at the moment. It's gone soft on the on the On sides. the outer edge. Yeah, on the outer Why edge. It's soft on the outer That's edge. That's not gonna help though, because it's still going to be the outer edge. I feel, I feel like it's upside down anyway because I noticed recently I've been sleeping on a zip the whole time and I'm pretty sure that's the wrong side. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Some orgy why. butter will just sort that right out. Just rub it in, you'll be fine. Anyway, half of Americans claim they flip it every six months and I just think half of Americans are liars. Oh. I think no one possibly does it that but much. Why should you do? why should you flip? I think... I think it's... Um, mm. To it's no, it's, well, I'll I can be, tell well, you exactly yeah. why you get soft on the outside yeah. and you fall <laughs> off the bed. That's why we're doing it. Is it not to try and air it out a little bit or something? I, I think don't it's know. so it's not the same bit of you always hitting the same bit of the mattress. Oh. Right, okay. And so it refreshes it a bit, it moves the scene around. Because mattresses are, are disgusting because they're full of like skin yes. cells, sweat, like bed bugs. So I think this is the way of just sort of redistributing the skin cells yeah. and sweat. And you should yeah, really yeah. get rid... But they're so expensive, mattresses. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're like thousands of pounds. You can't just... Because you should really re replace them regularly, I think. But that's why you should get a water band. You know? Oh, yeah, because you just changed the water. Yeah. Or not even, you know. Because water doesn't go rancid. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike jelly. <laughs> yeah. To bring us back to the start of the fact. Yeah. I need to move us on to our next fact, guys. <laughs> Uh, okay, it is time for fact number three, and that is my fact. My fact this week is that there used to be a room in the Pentagon where employees met specifically to have Pokemon battles. <laughs> this, is a, this is a discovery that, um, that was made back in 2016. Was there a situation room elsewhere in the Pentagon where other officials monitored the progress of those Pokemon battles <laughs> <laughs> with big screens? Yeah. Do you think they have tables where they're pushing yeah. a Pikachu yeah, along? Yeah, exactly, and... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the situation room. That's what it's for. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is uh, Pokemon Go. There was a huge craze, particularly about... Still is. Yeah, but th there was a mo... Well, James is... <laughs> What's that T-shirt you're wearing, James? Uh, <laughs> this is... I mean, this fact is up my street because I do yeah. like Pokemon and changing regimes in countries that I don't like, so... Ah. <laughs> oh. James Getting a loves... bit political tonight. Yeah. <laughs> James loves Pokemon Go so much. I don't know if we've ever said this. He likes it so much that when we went for a meeting for the first time ever, we were going to have a book of the year, no such thing as a fish book, and we were going to pitch it. We ended up being a bit late to the meeting because we were following James, but it turned out James had spotted a very rare Pokemon down the road from where we were, and we just blindly followed him. And then we were like, where are we? And he was like, yes, Snuffleupagus or whoever it is. <laughs> 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 it was that week they did a Sesame Street special, wasn't it, of Pokemon Go? Okay, so here's oh. the thing. It's Pokemon Go, and Pokemon Go was the app, and you would go and you would collect the Pokemons in various different places. You had, you had to walk around, didn't you? And you they would, would walk around, yeah. and yeah. And then what they had as part of the app, uh, I've never personally played it, so this is 101 for people that do. Yeah. Uh, you have gyms where you can take the Pokemon to, the Pokemon you have collected, and they can train there, but they can also battle for dominance of the gym. And those would be plopped all over the world in random spots. And it just so happened that one was in the Pentagon. And so 
anyone who was an employee there, and it would be specifically employees, because if you ever go on a tour of the Pentagon, you have to leave your phone. You're not allowed to bring your phone in with you. So it was specifically employees that were going to a very specific spot, and then they'd battle each other for dominance of this gym. And this was a huge problem because the Pokemon app can track where people are going. So their worry within the sort of uh, the Pentagon was that it shows the routes that people are taking. So if there are secret passages within the Pentagon or even just mapping out the general landscape, that's something that the information could possibly be hacked into and and retrieved. Someone might know that the Pentagon is Pentagon shaped. I mean, that would be (laughs) awful. (laughs) Can you imagine? (laughs) So they said no more Pokemon Go in the Pentagon. Do you know why the Pentagon is Pentagon shaped? I think this is amazing. No. It's because they were going to build it on a Pentagon shaped piece of land. And so they wanted the right shape of building for that piece of land. So it had to be a pentagon. And then they decided to move it somewhere else. And they thought, well, we've gone so far with this shape, we might as well keep it. That's literally the only reason. I mean, there's lots of good things about it being pentagon shape, but the reason is just it was supposed to go on this bit of land. That's incredible. What are are, are some of the good good things? Well, a circle is very good because you can get from one bit of a circle to another bit of a circle really quickly. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and a pentagon is a bit like a circle, but it's got straight edges, so it's easier to build than a circle. Yeah. Ah. It's, more, it's more of a circle than a square. Absolutely. Yeah. Less than a hexagon. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Food for thought tonight. <laughs> On, uh, and d- <clears throat> in the center of the kind of circular... Pentagon is um, <laughs> a now closed hot dog stand. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. That uh, in like during the Cold War, the Russians always had at least two missiles aimed at this hot dog stand because they thought that that was the Pentagon's most top secret meeting place. It was just where people got what? lunch, but what? they were what? convinced that it was. Was it because uh, they saw people kind of congregating? Yeah, and they'd be like, "What? That that has to be the that that's the heart of the Pentagon." That's when so actually, funny. it wow. was just a hot dog stand. I know. Wh- was it was it as part of the Pentagon? This hot dog. Yeah, stand? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was inside. I still feel like if the missiles hit it, the other bit of well, Pentagon exactly. would I mean, yeah. suffer some damage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> not really so specific, the missile, that it's like... No, tr- yeah. I mean, you know. But isn't that it's fascinating, I think? Did they know that, the hot dog owners at the time? <laughs> uh, I think they did, because everyone used to call it Ground Zero, didn't they? That was the nickname yeah. oh. for it. Uh, wow. The reason being that if the Russians hit, it would become Ground Zero, wow. become flattened. Blimey. Yeah. Right. Um, I read a, a thing that the Pentagon own, just their cool stuff division. They own a laser... Which, that's not the cool bit, which can <laughs> analyze cool. who you are based on your heartbeat alone. Really? So they'll, you know, ah. you have, a, all of our hearts have the unique cardiac signature, how, we, how our hearts beat. Yeah. And they can point that laser at you from 200 meters away and say, there's Dan, <laughs> or whatever it might be. What if I've like just gone up a flight of stairs or something, would it change my heartbeat or... It would change, possibly. It? But a, maybe yeah. it changes with the same, but it's still recognizably you. Yeah, they go, that's James, and he's very unfair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few flaws to this thing, though. It's called Jetson, which is what they've developed. And the flaws consist of the fact that, um, A, we don't really have that big a database of people's unique heartbeats. So uh, yeah. when everyone's coming, Sorry. they can go, ah, no, no idea who that <laughs> is, right? <laughs> And then the second floor, and this is, you know, 200 meters away we can do this, is, yeah. is their claim. The other problem is, um, yes, they can do it if you're wearing a T-shirt, but if you're wearing a coat, <laughs> oh, <laughs> they no. can't get you. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's, it's, okay, it's is... half useful. Yeah, it's yeah. not as good as the fingerprint yet or the uh, eyeball. The light tree. <laughs> the light tree. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Do you know, cool. I, was, I was reading about the Pentagon generally, about tour guides, because um, you can go there. I, I imagine, Jamie, that's somewhere that you might have gone, but maybe not yet. I haven't. Uh, but you love, love this to, kind yeah. of stuff, right? So, oh, um, yeah. yeah. I, I actually have a friend that works at the Pentagon. Do really? you? He didn't reply to my emails about fun facts about the Pentagon. <laughs> so the security is really high, guys. <laughs> We're safe. <laughs> yeah. But one of the things is the stats <laughs> that you get told about the tour guides that work there, and one of it is that they walk two to three miles per day but entirely backwards because when they're doing their tours they they right. never turn around to lead because they always need eyes on the people that they're taking on the tour guide so they guide themselves what? yeah they guide themselves by landmarks so as they're walking back they'll go there's the fire extinguisher that means you know 10 steps until you get <laughs> to the next corner then i can round wow. it like that and so yeah every day two to three miles of backward walking that's is insane. what they get yeah. and there's loads of ramps so that's really quite 
impressive to walk down a ramp backwards. Because you know, there's like yeah. no lift to the yeah, Pentagon. Yeah, yeah. It was built with one lift. Yes. Because it was built during the it was made of Second concrete. World War. Yeah. It was made of concrete. And it was, in fact, it's nicknamed the Concrete Cobweb, which is cool. Oh. Um, and it had one lift for 33,000 people yeah. in the early days because um, you can't make lifts out of concrete, I suppose. Right. And they were um, saving steel for the for the war efforts. They didn't want to... Yeah, ah, yeah. yeah. But they, they've, now, yeah. they've now put some more in. They've now got yeah. dozens and dozens. I love the idea of you repeatedly emailing your friend who's, who's in the middle of looking at a screen and there's like a bomb counter on it. I know. It's like, <laughs> oh, it's, it's somewhere in Ulaanbaatar, but I don't know where. Just ping, ping. Hi, just wondering if you saw my previous I was like, fun fact <laughs> request email. Is it true that they used to have office chair races down the ramps <laughs> yeah. in the Pentagon? That's all I wanted to know. I think what he's really going is, God damn it, Snuffleupagus, come on, win this <laughs> Pokemon battle. <laughs> no, we can't because they've banned the Pokemon. Uh, yeah, of course. Yes. They same. also banned. Yeah, well, that was the whole oh. thing that you aren't allowed it anymore. Yeah, right? it's out. It's out. Because oh. um, they they're like banning things left and right at the Pentagon. Like TikTok's now banned at the Pentagon. Um, but they also banned Furbies. Oh yeah. In oh. 1999, because oh. okay. they record. What well, do you say? Well, they don't, but they, they kind of marketed themselves as that it's like the, the thinking toy or the chatty toy or something. I don't know. And they were like concerned that it would be a security risk that they would like, yeah, record what you were saying and then say it back to you. That's um, so funny. I think it's fair enough to ask people not to bring Furbies in. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's it's a of the spying <laughs> thing. It's weird having to bring your toy to work. Well, you say Pentagon. that. <laughs> Pokemon Go is just as kind of yeah? maybe yeah, yeah, childish. Yeah. I don't, yeah. don't want to, you know. Um, but the. <laughs> For, I think we say for all ages, rather than... Sure, uh, sure. Yeah. sure. Yeah. It's a game. Three in the end, three episodes of No Such Things as They Share. Yeah. Uh, going no, on no, the high. Furbies was really interesting, wasn't it? Because they, the way they worked is they had a stock number of English words they had, and they had a stock number of Furbies words. They were just like, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it started off, they could just say the Furby words, and then as you <laughs> owned it for longer and longer, it kind of put more and more of the English words into the vocabulary. And so people thought that they were picking up oh words that God. you were saying Teaching to them. It, yeah. But actually it was just programmed to do that. But that's, oh. a, I mean, that's a bit like how it is with children, isn't it? Yeah. Like they start off talking complete nonsense and then by the end of their saying like, Nana or dog or whatever. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of, no, maybe that's, that's why they made the phobia like that. Yeah, I or guess Or maybe so. all children are actually fake. <laughs> <laughs> Prove me wrong. Which is more likely, Andy, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like the, the guy or, the, or the, the CEO of the company that made Furbies had to come out and say, this isn't true. <laughs> Our Furbies actually aren't as clever as we've been lying about. Wow. Um, and, and he also said, you know, there was a rumor that they could send, they had enough technology to send something to, in, into space. And they said that one <laughs> wait, woman- Wait, wait, sorry. Yeah. Just break that down a bit. The fir wait, what are the fir like Somebody the, thought the that Furbies, Furbies had so much power that they could send a rocket into space. Are we, talking, they, like, are we talking about a complete Cape Canaveral setup? Which yes. is entirely stark. I don't know. Furbies at all the desks. <laughs> like, there's a Furby in <laughs> it with the briefcase going onto the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if Elon Musk zips down his jacket, it's just Furbies all the way up. He is a Furby. <laughs> What does that mean? They could send a rocket well, to it's space. Like, it's the AI worry of its day, I guess, right? Is what yeah, you're like, it wasn't true. That's what he was saying. Because right. he also said oh, that there was a true. woman who was absolutely <laughs> insistent that her Furby was singing Italian operas. That also wasn't true. Oh, my God. But she was hearing... She was she... convinced that she taught this Furby an aria. Yeah. And she's like, my Furby's really good at opera. And he's like, they literally don't have that capability. So they kind of had wow. to backtrack on all of their marketing campaign of that wow. these were like, yeah, That's clever amazing. toys, but they were actually all pre-programmed. God, it was a scam, wasn't it? It could be a haunted Furby. And that's a ghost I will believe in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Imagine the next, like, crude moon mission that gets there <laughs> and finds they have built their own society without us noticing. The Furbies yeah. beat us to it. The, Damn it. The dark side of the moon is entirely yeah. Furby owned and operated <laughs> now. <laughs> Uh, have you heard of Tia, uh, Tia Pikachu? Uh, um, no. So she is a Chilean uh, school teacher. Mm -hmm. And they've had a load of protests in Chile against the government. And she decided to go dressed as a giant Pikachu. The reason being that her seven-year-old son had maxed out her husband's credit card buying Detective Pikachu merchandise. Uh, they managed to send loads of it back, but some of it they couldn't send back. And there's this giant sort of inflatable Pikachu they couldn't send back. Okay, so then they have some protests in Chile, and she decides, well, I'm just going to go dressed as a Pikachu, because why not? It's a protest. Yeah. 
uh, and she just became really, really, really famous uh, because there was video of her being water, like fired with water um, cannon. Water cannon, yeah, in a big Pikachu costume, being forced back. She was um, shot with rubber bullets, dressed as Pikachu. <laughs> God. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. But the, because she became so famous, she is part of the team who are writing the new Chilean constitution. So after no. the protest, they decided that they were going to write a new constitution. So every five clauses, thought, it's just going to say, Pika, Pika, Pika. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the podcast. Stop the podcast. Hello, everybody. Just wanted to let you know we are sponsored this week by Squarespace, the fabulous website design website. That's right. Yeah, a design website for websites. If you are looking to have your own website, this is the website to go to. There are so many things that you can do using Squarespace to design your perfect website, be it for business or personal use. You can do things like create your own merch, for example. You can actually design it on Squarespace. And then using the feature of the online store that they provide as well, you can then send your merchandise to whoever you want and it will deal with the production, inventory and shipping all done for you. There are so many templates that you can use to design the best looking version of the website. And also, Andy, you get very excited by this. There's a fluid mm. engine. Ooh, I do. Fluid Engine is basically the the next generation website design system they've got. It allows you to start with a brilliant template and then customize every single detail very easily. So if you would like to get your entrepreneurial website going today, just go to squarespace.com. That'll get you a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch your entrepreneurial website, you go to squarespace.com slash fish and you'll save 10% of your first purchase of a website or a domain. That's right. So squarespace.com head there first for your free trial and then once you've got it all going looking good head to squarespace.com slash fish and you're going to get 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain do it now okay on with the show on with the podcast it is time for our final fact of the show and that is andy my fact is that in 1972 a family who had survived a shipwreck kept themselves alive by giving each other turtle blood enemas. <laughs> Guys, it's a light-hearted and funny fact. Um, so I just imagine, like, that family <laughs> seeing each other at Christmas. Yeah. You know, they haven't seen it. Should we talk about... No, let's <laughs> never talk about that again. Never talk about it again. So no, this, go on. Give, us, give this, us the context. Okay, this comes from an amazing piece that was in the Financial Times by a writer called Kitty Drake, and she was interviewing people who had... Uh, real knowledge of, of shipwreck and, uh, and being cast away. And um, she spoke to a man called Douglas Robertson who uh, was sailing around the world with his family, his siblings and his parents. He was 18 years old and their yacht was attacked by killer whales. So they were halfway across the Pacific. Amazing. They completely battered the yacht. The family all abandoned ship into a, a small dinghy that was, I think there were seven people, six or seven people in this dinghy that was designed for one fewer than the number of people who ended up in it. They were 200 miles from the Galapagos and the wind was going in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. So they were really in trouble. They spent 38 days stranded in the Pacific and they were sailing towards the doldrums. They were trying to get weirdly to the doldrums because there was a better chance of being spotted and detected where they were heading to. So the doldrums is where there's not as much wind or...? Exactly, sorry, yeah, the region where there's, there's no wind. But it does get lots of rain. Um, so anyway, so they're in big trouble. They did manage to get some turtles on board and they had to hunt the turtles that approached them and they used their blood as soup so that's that's a good thing then unfortunately the water ran very low and they only had the old fish polluted rainwater in the bottom of their dinghy mm. and it wasn't safe to drink but the mother of the family lynn was a nurse and she realized you could absorb it safely through your bottom and so <laughs> everyone in the family got a rain Guys, this is funnier than we're... <laughs> I, I feel like there's tension in the room. It's like they, they, they all make it. They all made it and they got picked up. It was all oh, right. spoiler alert. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they were all right. But anyway, she worked out brilliant an intuition that you could absorb it through your bottom. So everyone in the family got a rain and turtle blood enema. And it gets into your system, but it doesn't go through your but digestive so what, system. What, I'm getting confused when you say the enema bits. What do you mean? Up the bum. Squirt it up the bum. Oh! Funnel, you funnel it. What have you been researching? Well, because I read... Yeah. I read... <laughs> Oh. Where, where, Dan, 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 Dan. Just, where does the orgy butter go? Think <laughs> in those terms. That's way more disgusting than yeah, what I thought. Yeah, it's horrible. 
Because that's the thing. Like, it's oh. not just turtle blood animals. It's disgusting rainwater. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. infected fish gut water. Like, I think it's the, yeah, foul. So well, the point is... But ingenious. Like, yeah, it's ingenious. I mean, amazing. If you drink this stuff, it's yeah. got all sorts of horrible things in it, and it can make you really, really sick. Now, if you go the other way, yeah, yeah. then there's a way for the water to go into your body through your rectum. Yeah. yeah. But because you're already getting disgusting things going down there anyway. Your body is protected against those disgusting things. Exactly. So you can still get the water, but it won't get the bacteria and all that. So here's what I thought. I thought they were removing the rectal membrane from the turtles and using that as a as a <laughs> bag to collect the water. You Genuinely, not. that's what the yeah, future bag not. to collect the water? Well, you need to collect water to drink it <laughs> through your fucking mouth, right? anus. How much water are you collecting? It's got a massive fucking shell on it. If you want to keep yeah. water... <laughs> If you ever get a turtle and you want to keep water, don't take the little bag out of its anus. Just turn it upside down. We've got to get to its asshole. <laughs> Jesus, oh, wow. <laughs> Turns out it's Dan's last appearance on Notion Sings a Fish as well. <laughs> Oh. I'd love to see you on like one of those reality shipwreck shows. Dan. <laughs> Meanwhile, on Dan's Island, things have gone from bad to worse. Um, cool, that makes oh, yeah. Daniel. I, weirdly, I still think your one makes less sense. <laughs> I mean, it's water up your incredibly clever. It's like, incredibly clever, and it did. It is the thing that saved their lives. I mean, yeah, they were really, yeah, yeah. they were really on the. And know, they, they were all struggling. just trusted Lynn when she said that. She's she a nurse. She's a nurse. I get that, but like, how often are you? <laughs> I'm a nurse, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. that's not common knowledge, yeah. I would say. Oh, I don't know. Wow. Yeah. 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 Uh, what I think is amazing is that there was the group. There was the the husband and wife. Yeah. And I think they had, was it three or four kids? It was three. There were four, three, but yeah. one of them got and off before this leg of the journey. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> that was lucky. Fuck yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, I'll die. I'll just die. It's cool. someone up. So yeah. in this this family of everyone putting stuff up their ass, no. there was one guy who'd only just met them. <laughs> yeah. Did you read his name? He was called Robin Williams, weirdly. Was um, he? Yeah. yeah. And he'd just taken a job on the boat in return for his birth and, you know, just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, so it sounds funny. like such a tough journey. But it was oh, oh, God. They had to spend six hours a day just blowing the dinghy up, you know, just because it was... It was constantly losing air, and they yeah, six yeah, hours yeah. a day. Well, like, they've got nothing else to do, to be fair. Away. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, passes the time. Yeah. yeah. And, and they then they eventually there. got back, didn't they? They did. And they, then they, the husband yeah. and wife just immediately divorced. No. <laughs> yeah, did they yeah, really? Yeah, did yeah they? I'm afraid so. So God. the guy who was um, kind of took them on this trip, uh, Douglas, he wrote a book uh, and went to live in the Med, uh, and his wife became a farmer. Oh, wow. Oh, because they were farmers before they, they set were, out. They yeah, were, yeah, 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 yeah. So they right. completely, they split up, yeah. Wow. Gosh. Oh, that's yeah. sad. That is sad. sad. It is yeah, sad. yeah. Did you um, hear, there was a recent um, someone stranded out in the ocean and having to get by with what materials they had, and it was a guy called Elvis, and he was, um, he was found 120 nautical miles northwest of Colombia's uh, Puerto Bolivar. I don't know how to pronounce that. Lovely. Properly. Yep. And he survived... He, he wrote help on the uh, hull of his sailboat, and so someone okay. saw that, but he was stuck out there for a long time. Um, and he was 24 days, I think, he was out there, and he survived almost in exclusively on tomato ketchup from Heinz. Wow, and so that became really? the story when he got back. And so they found him after being missing all this time. And then Heinz decided that they wanted to give him a new boat because they thought, this is amazing. I thought you were about to say, like, give, give him some more ketchup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's a much better... That's good PR by yeah. Heinz, yeah, yeah. So they thought... So they've done it. They did that. Well, for ages, they couldn't find him. So he disappeared again, oh, but gosh. just into his normal life because yeah. he was, you know, he didn't make a big fuss of it. So there was right. a huge campaign to find the missing boat guy who wow. then... And they found Elvis, basically. That, I mean, it was, yeah, a hard hashtag to use, but um, <laughs> they, they wow. found him and they, he's now got his boat. That's great. Oh, that tomato nice. ketchup is exclusively, yeah, what he was surviving on. Wow. Gosh. Um, you can... Just a tip for any of us who get shipwrecked. Yeah. Um, do have a plastic bag if you can. Um... <laughs> if you don't have okay. a turtle to hand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, why would that be? Well, you use a bag of water. What's your? What are you using this bag of water for, guys? Drink it out of. Making fire. You can make fire with a bag of water. Oh, like a lens. Wow. Like, like a lens. If it's a clear bag, do make sure it's a clear bag. A um, lot of caveats on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not no, a bag for life. My next that, trip. Ironically, a bag for life wouldn't work. Mm. That is... <laughs>
and you'd be kicking yourself, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> Pay 30p for this. <laughs> No, a bog standard, like a clear plastic bag. If you can make it into a round shape, you can use that to focus the rays of the sun onto your That's onto your clever. Tinder, and then uh, and it makes fun. And if you don't have a plastic bag, you can use a light bulb. So if, you it, don't, if you don't have a light bulb, uh, just have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse my ignorance. Like, would it not melt the plastic, or is that a stupid thing oh, to yeah. ask? Uh, it's not a stupid question, but I don't think it would. I don't know why. Okay. Um, okay. Maybe because with the point. Oh, the point at which the rays focus is going to be the, the hottest point, which is not oh, on the okay. surface of the bag. It's on mm, the right. whatever you're pointing it at. So. Interesting. Yeah. I was reading some advice from a guy called Paul Hart, who is the Royal Navy's. Uh, he's a lieutenant commander for the Royal Navy, and he was asked, "If you get shipwrecked on an island, what should you be doing in order to survive?" So he wrote this big list of stuff. And so here's a quiz-like uh, moment here. Oh, great, great. Yep, okay. So your, your boat has crashed on the shore or your airplane has crashed into okay. um, the, you know, the ocean and you've made it to shore. What is the first thing that you should be collecting in order to survive? From the you're aircraft? A, you're, on a, you're on an island, yeah. So the, so the food. Okay, so food would be a, a good uh, well, one. Well, I would say the eight single CDs that I carry with me everywhere I go. <laughs> a copy of the Bible that you always have. copy of the Bible. Yeah. And what would your luxury be? A lovely bottle of Tabasco sauce. <laughs> oh, lovely. Um, <laughs> so the answer is, <laughs> he says... So, no, 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 a lifetime supply of Marmite. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah, go on. Okay. So, yeah. Get that right. Yeah. Yeah. Orgy butter if that's not available. <laughs> yeah. oh, God. One of the same to him. So, uh, life jacket. Life jacket, no. No. Uh, uh, wait, wait, seats what? can be used as flotation devices. I'm trying to remember what they've said to what? me. Things that you're going to take from your wreckage or yeah, things that yeah. are on the island? No, things that you take from the wreckage. Oh, Ooh, uh, uh, something to... Uh, the radio from the... A knife. No. Well, knife is, yes, it's up there. But he says... A clear bag. A clear <laughs> plastic bag. <laughs> That's it. That's it. He says Wellington boots. Oh, okay. What? Sorry, when you get on a plane, do they just hand you some Wellington boots? <laughs> He's saying any kind of um, very strong footwear that you can have right, okay. because right. you're going to be going into the ocean a lot in order to get food. You're going to be traveling. Oh. And injury is the thing you need to avoid, yes. most of all. And your feet That's are most really likely to be getting injured. Because actually on that Ryanair thing, it tells you to take off your high heels before you jump on the on the slide, doesn't it? Yes. And you're saying, you're saying, keep them on. <laughs> <laughs> is that? <laughs> I feel like... No, so that's that's the biggest thing. That's interesting, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. interesting, yeah. yeah. I mean, wellies, is it is like quite a niche thing, as, as James just said, to have yeah, on yeah, there. Yeah. It makes sense. I would personally get a knife, um, because then you can fashion some sort of like... Fashion, make some well. Oh, come on, mate. Not wellies. Come on. But you could like get like... <laughs> Either you're going to carve your own... <laughs> Oh, no way. No, but you know what I mean? You, but like a knife surely is the most important thing because that can... That, well, a knife that's you very can use, important. You can tap... You actually, you, you can, can make knife, shoes You can yourself. tap the rubber tree and then <laughs> with a simple mould fashioned from bark... <laughs> Exactly. You've got your own welly factory then. Look, yeah. you could like, trade it... the knife for some wellies <laughs> if there's some local welly owners. <laughs> there are local welly owners. I don't think You'll you need probably... the wellies. You can just leave. You're probably... <laughs> You're in North Devon. Yeah. Like... <laughs> oh, That's my God. That's so funny. Um, That's I read the US <laughs> Army Survival Manual oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, to see you. if enemas were um, oh, part yeah. of their yeah. um, suggestion. Um, there, there is one mention of enemas in the whole survival manual, and the idea is to use warm water enemas as a way to treat hypothermia. Oh, okay. okay. Apparently, it's a good because it warms it's... you up from the inside. Cool. If you think about that oh, way. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, the thing that they said to drink is the aqueous fluid found along the spine and the eyes of large fish. Right. Oh, oh god. Isn't that interesting? Is that because it's less salty? Than... Yeah. So everything else that's in the fish, all the other bodily fluids, have got lots of protein, lots of fat, so it's going to make you more thirsty. Yeah. But just the water around the eyes and the water around the spinal fluid, that stuff is just perfect. Right. <laughs> Um, I just want to quickly mention this guy, because one of the other things that this um, uh, Paul Hart that I was talking about, the um, the guy who said that Wellington boots are what you needed. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that he said that was really important was having positive mentality. That's the main thing. As soon as you crash, you go, fantastic, this is great. <laughs> and if you can keep that mindset, then you're going to be fine. And that really kind of is... That comes into play when you read about the story of Jose Salvador Alvarenga, who was a guy who was out at sea with one other person for 438 days. They were lost out at sea, 
And it was a positive mentality that kept him going. And when he was interviewed by a journalist who wrote a book about it, he said, what's the thing that you remember most about it? And he said, my imagination. I imagined good food and I had the best sex of my life. <laughs> and he used to, so they used to, the two guys used to see the planes that would fly over that would never see them. And they would go, what do you think they're eating up there? And they would picture the food that and they were eating. And then they'd eatering. have sex with each other. No, they never, they, they both would then have. <laughs> also, the best food of their lives on a plane. <laughs> Has he been on a plane? <laughs> Bit of stale bread and something in a little reheated tray. Yeah, great. <laughs> Better than whatever they were eating up their assholes at that time. It was, uh, <laughs> fair. They're on a dinghy. Out in, and so, and yeah. Diggy food, oh, diggy food is terrible. <laughs> you know, well, What's yeah. that all about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so he used to, both of them would do this. They would sit, but wow. him particularly, he'd sit there every day, he'd close his eyes, he'd imagine that they'd actually crashed onto a beach and there was, right. a, there was a beautiful woman walking towards him and they would have sex. And he said every day, he just had amazing sex in his head oh. and that kept him positive wow yeah the other guy died right did he i think so yeah <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't positive enough <laughs> god's sake unbelievable if you were just a bit more positive <laughs> as he's throwing him off the edge of this dinghy <laughs> i was gonna ask actually um who <laughs> No, just quickly, who out of, out, say the three of you got shipwrecked. I'd die who first. Who do you think would survive? I would die first. The first, like, like. I'd die within 30 seconds. Do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, no. I would start an egg, I would start an We're going to have to eat him. We're going to have to eat him. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy selling Wellington to do something. No, no. <laughs> Cannibalism returned to North Devon today. <laughs> <laughs> and Dan's probably the most positive, so I guess you win. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dan will be having fantastic sex. <laughs> <laughs> and eating delicious plain food. Yeah. Oh, God, what a treat. <laughs> All right, we need to wrap up. That is it. That is all of our facts. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to get in contact with any of us about the things that we have said over the course of this podcast, we can be found on our Twitter accounts. I'm on at Shriveland, James. At James Harkin. Andy. At Andrew Hunter M. And Jamie. At Uncle Eagle. Yep. <laughs> Or you can uh, get us on our group account, which is at no such thing. Or you can go to our website, no such thing as a fish.com. All of our previous episodes are up there. Do check it out, as well as Club Fish. Very exciting place. Um, but that, that, is, that is all for tonight. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> putting an end to this. Uh, thank you so much, Soho. That was awesome. Thank you for coming to our show tonight. And um, we're going to be back again next week with another episode. And we'll see you then. Goodbye! <laughs>